Hello Booktuber, my name is Elizabeth. Welcome to my channel, Book As and Books. This video will be all about Book As and Books because I bought a whole bunch of them. <laughs> I went to support my local bookstores because they had been closed for the past three weeks because of events out of anybody's control and I was very happy and very eager to support them. So I went in there and happily bought many books. Uh, 13 in total. So the books in French I bought at La Librairie du Soleil and the books in English I bought at Chapters. Uh, the first one, La Librairie du Soleil, is an independent bookstore. They sell books in French and Chapters is a big box bookstore, but it is for me the local bookstore. It's the one that is the closest to where I live and they, they cannot survive. I Well, survive, yeah, but uh, they, they are not rich enough that uh, three weeks closing will not make a dent in their revenues. It will make a dent and they need support too. So I was very happy to support them. And uh, in the coming days, hopefully this weekend, I will go a bit further downtown and support the bookstores there too. <laughs> so there may be another book haul coming up uh, in, in this feed. I don't know. So the books that I bought, I will present in alphabetical order and you will see that some of them uh, I had upcoming readathons in mind um, or personal projects in mind. Um, Personal project, <laughs> rereading Jane Austen. <laughs> I bought the last two books that I didn't own and I bought them in the beautiful classic, no, vintage classics edition. So this is Northanger Abbey and this is Mansfield Park. This one is the first Jane Austen that I read. I read it in 2003, so it's almost 20 years ago now. And I have never reread it since, so I really wonder what I remember of it. I can tell you, I don't remember much. I remember the movie much more than the book. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm curious to, to see what I will think of the book on rereading. And same thing for this one. This one I remember even less, even though I read it a bit uh, farther down the line. I think it was in 2005 or six. So um, yeah, Th these are rereads. And hopefully in uh, July, for Jane Austen July, I will be able to do an official, final, definitive ranking of uh, my favorite Jane Austen novels. Stay tuned. <laughs> the next one is for a readathon that is coming up in March. It is uh, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. Agatha Christie is one of these rare authors that I can read in English in the original but prefer to read in French. Um, I think it's because I met her in French in a way. When I started reading her books I was uh, 12, 13, and I did not read in English at the time, so I read all of my Agatha Christie's in French. I have read a few in English since, and for some reason I don't think that I am gaining much, or maybe I should say I'm not losing anything by reading her in translation. I think the translations are very well done, so that's why I bought it in French. And uh, this particular one is rather famous. I have never read it, but I know how it ends, but I've never read it. So I want to read it. I want to see if... Um, I I don't know if I'll be able to do that knowing how it ends, but I wonder if I will be able to place myself in a situation where I don't know who the murderer is and see if I would have seen the clues, if I would have noticed. So uh, that, that's going to be a uh, an interesting read. Oh, next, absolutely 100% totally, completely because of Booktube. I would never have bought this book without Booktube. And more specifically, Tom L.A. books. Um, <laughs> so this is Dante's Divine Comedy. Uh, there's the, the three books are in there, um, uh, Inferno, Purgatorio and Paradiso. And I chose this particular edition. They had more than one, but this was the only one where the three books were together. And there was the original Tuscan on the left page. So that is the reason why I chose this particular translation. And I also thought that a French translation would be more relevant for me than an English translation for the simple reason that French is a Romance language as is um, Italian or Tuscan. So I think I will be able to see more similarities in the French translation than I would see in um, the English translation. Oh, uh, and I said that this was because of Tom from Tom L.A. Books. It is also because of Ursula, of uh, Ursula's Odds and Sods. I will leave links to both of their channels in the description box below. Tom is going canto by canto, but Ursula is going by themes. Uh, she made several videos and uh, a few of them on different translations, uh, but some of them on themes, general themes, like uh, women in Dante's comedy or gay men in Dante's comedy. So I think it's another very interesting way of uh, find, of getting to know this book. And I say it's because of booktube. I don't think I would have had 
the interest and probably the courage to get into this book if I did not have these videos as a guidance. So I'm curious to see how long it will be before I start reading it. <laughs> Next is a reread, what well, will be a reread. It is The Gambler by Dostoevsky. I read this, though not in this translation, it was a different translator, but I read this in college, uh, so that's over 20 years ago, it's going on 25 years now, and I have not reread it since. So I would like to reread Dostoevsky because I've read most of it, and um, it's been a while since I've read or reread many of Dostoevsky, and because I read um, The Sinner and the Saint in January, which is about the writing of Crime and Punishment. I want to reread all of Dostoevsky now. So I didn't have The Gambler, now I do. The next one um, is not translated in English, so I will not really dwell on it. It is a historical novel about the widow of uh, Mozart, of the composer Mozart. Um, I am a sucker, there's no other word, <laughs> for any book that refers in some sort of way to classical music. You put the name of a composer in the title and I will buy the book. And the worst is that very often I'm disappointed. I have not read a single very good book about classical music or about real composers. I haven't read a single one and yet I keep being attracted like a fly is attracted to honey to these books. So this one is not translated in English so um, I maybe it will be one day, I don't know. The next one I've already read. I bought it's not a reread. I bought it yesterday and I read it yesterday and I finished it this morning. It is uh, Happening by Annie Ernaud. It's wonderful. Um, it's rare that I can say that in a book haul, but uh, it, it is. Um, it's a must read. If you've never read it, read it. Uh, this is a memoir, very, very short. It's 120 pages, but it's written super big, like two or three paragraphs a page. Um, it, it reads in an evening, really. Um, and it's about uh, the abortion the author underwent in the 1960s. The illegal abortion, I should say, because at the time it was illegal in France. And it, it's really powerful. Um, yeah, I, it's it's a very good book. It's I recommend it. <laughs> Next, okay, it's a different pile. So uh, there are six books left to go. Uh, contemporary fiction, though it says classic here, but it's contemporary fiction. It is Medicine River by Thomas King. Uh, this is a uh, Canadian author, and I've read six of his books so far, and I've loved every one of them, and I want to read all of his works. So he, th there are not many authors that I can say that about, that I want to read all of their works, but Thomas King is one of them. So I am slowly making my way through his entire oeuvre, and uh, this is a book I have not read yet. So this is about a young man, I don't know how young, probably maybe middle age, I don't know about a man, <laughs> who goes back to his reserve for his mother's um, funeral. And he thinks that he's going to leave as soon as the funeral is over, but somehow he is enticed to stay. And he becomes the only professional photographer uh, in Medicine River. So that is the, the basic premise. Uh, I don't know exactly what the plot is, and I don't care because I love Thomas King. The next book is also a booktube influenced by. Uh, it is 1491 by uh, Charles C. Mann. This is a non-fiction book about um, the Americas before Christopher Columbus. So I guess the indigenous people and um, the, the situation of the Americas prior to the arrival of the Europeans. And the first time I saw this book, I heard about this book, I think was on the channel of Jack the Rambling Raconteur. Um, it was a long time ago. It was not recent. It was uh, probably about a year ago. Um, but uh, I think it's the first time I heard about this book and I've been thinking about it since. I know there's a companion to a sort of sequel that is 1493. Um, it wasn't available at the, the bookstore, but anyway, I thought I would start with the, the first one first. So that, that is nonfiction. And then another mystery, probably for March Mystery Madness. It is The Setapur Moonstone by Sujata Masi. This is set in the 1920s in India. I know it's a series and I know it's not the first in the series. I don't know how far down the line it is. I don't really care. Um, it was uh, one of those, uh, the first one was not available. Um, at the bookstore, but this one was. And I want to read uh, that some, a book in that series. I want to try that series because it sounds really, really good. Uh, so, bye-bye. Oh, the bargain section. 
By the way, while they were closed, Chapters Rideau decided to move the bargain section. It used to be on the ground floor near George Street, and now it's on the second floor near Rideau Street. <laughs> but I found it anyway, and I found this, because Internet by Gretchen Mc. Um, it is about how internet influences the English language, how the language is changing because of the internet. So uh, I've heard about this on booktube too, and I'm very curious to read this book. Uh, yeah. um, I don't know if there will be a readathon except Nonfiction November where I will be able to s fit it in, but uh, it doesn't matter much. I'll just read it when I want to read it anyway. <laughs> Next uh, is a beautiful collection that I love. This is a, it's in French, it's the Zulma collection, but they always had these gorgeous covers. The author is Marie Vieux-Chauvet and the title in English is, I'm just going to check my paper, Love, Anger, Madness, a Haitian Trilogy. So this is uh, by a Haitian author, the author is from Haiti, and this was published in 1968. And it is, um, an attack, in a way, against the regime, the di dictatorial regime that was in place at the time, and uh, Vieux Chauvet was exiled because of it. So it's part of the literature that, um, that there are quite a few of them in the 20th century, uh, authors who write a book and because of it they, they are exiled. As far as I know, I don't think she was ever allowed to come back. She was So that was published in 1968, and I think she died in 1973. So I don't think she ever came, went back to Haiti after that. So th this will be for Caribbean, but I may read it before because it sounds really, really good. And the last one is The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. Um, Wharton is one of these authors who is a classic author, but I've never read anything by her. And she is on my list of 10 women authors I would like to read before the end of the year. Um, it was my version of the Mooks and the Gripes bucket list tag. Um, so... Yeah, I, now I have at least one book by Edith Wharton that I can start to read if I want to. So that is the last book in my book haul. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you'd like to read any of these books, and uh, yeah, go support your local bookstores. <laughs> Thank you everyone for watching. I will see you in the next video. À la prochaine!